Pastor, I want 15 minutes, please. At 12 minutes, put your finger up in the air like this. Okay? Amen. This was a message that God gave me. And when it came to me, the Lord opened my, illuminated my understanding on the dynamic truth that is contained in this parable. And I thought it was going to electrify the church. I thought that I would see people coming to the altar in droves when I preached this sermon. I've preached it in conventions. I've preached it here and there. I preached it once here. And I have been amazed at the response to this portion of the word of the Lord because it doesn't seem, it seems that it, it, that it, that we do not comprehend that what God says that he means. Now, I will read the parable to you that is found in Matthew 18. The kingdom, verse 23, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king that would take account of his servants. The, it's a little bit ambiguous in King James, but these are, these are his tax collectors, the men in his kingdom that collect, record, and give him his, the tax that have been collected. And he would take an account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents. Now, that talents, there, there were two. The Romans had a talent. The Hebrews had a talent. But it is an approximately between 80 and 100 million dollars that the servant has embezzled. Now this is a parable. This is not something that actually happened because it wouldn't even, the Roman Empire didn't take that much in all of their taxes. Almost a billion dollars, almost a hundred million dollars have been embezzled. And for as much as he had not to pay his Lord, the Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and his children and all that he had and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me and I will pay it all. Now this is not true. The man could not pay it back. It would have, at the, at the rate of a day's pay, at that particular time in history, it would have taken over 100,000 years for him to make enough money to pay back the debt. And so his Lord knew that he couldn't pay it back. But he made the statement, I will pay it. <clears throat> then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants which owed him a hundred pence which would be about $17. And he laid hands on him, and he took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what thou owest. And the fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he could have done it. It was in the realm of the possible that he could pay back the $17. And he would not, but went 
and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said to him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because you 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 desired of me. Should not thou also have compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth, angry, and delivered him to the tormentors, the jailer, till he should pay all that was due to him. So likewise, shall my heavenly Father do to you if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother that trespasses. (coughs) Heavenly Father, search our hearts. Cause us, Lord, to as as you have forgiven us the debt of sin, our iniquities, our failures, our shortcomings. May we, Lord, today forgive from our hearts those that we feel that have wronged us. Let us look in chapter 5 of Matthew and the 23rd verse. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar or you come to worship God, you come to the temple and you bring your lamb or your turtle dove, or whatever it is that you've come to worship God. And there, when you're there before the altar to worship, you remember that your brother has aught against thee. Leave there thy gift before the altar. Don't offer your gift to God. Don't enter into worship to God. But go and be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. But God is saying, if things are not right this way, they can't be right this way. Lord said, I don't want your praise. I don't want your tithe. I don't want your worship. I don't want your dance. I don't want you to worship me until things are right this way. Then come and worship me. Now, let me go back to this parable illustrating the kingdom of God. That if we do not forgive men their trespasses, if we do not forgive those who have wronged us or sinned against us or in some way real or imagined hurt us, if we do not, then God will not forgive us. And may, may we, uh, as, as I'm preaching this, only the Holy Spirit can speak to your heart. Only the Holy Spirit can speak to your heart. Because as I've preached this before, this goes right over people's head. That don't mean that don't mean me. That don't mean me. I don't have nothing against anybody. I'm 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 you know. Now let me give you I have five, but I'm gonna give you three. Three ways that you will know 
that you have or have not forgiven a person. Is there anybody in here that has not been wronged by somebody? Anybody that nobody has wronged you? So then everybody in here has been wronged at one time or another. Is that what I'm to assume from that nobody rose there? All right, so then we're all in here. So, okay, we've all had somebody that's trespassed. We, we, we put up our sign, no trespassing, and they walked on our grass. All right. Now, how can I know that this thing is for... I don't have anything in my heart against them. How do I know? Number one, if you can remember it, it isn't forgiven. If every time you see them or hear their name, that incident comes up, you've not forgiven them. God said, when I forgive, I forget. Their sins will I remember no more. They're buried in the sea of God's forgetfulness, and then God put up a sign, no trespassing. So if you can remember that, every time you think of that person, suddenly the wrong that they did comes to your mind. You have not forgiven them. It's still there. And so you need today to, to uh, in your heart, to say, Lord, I forgive them. All right, number two. You would like to hear that some evil has happened to them. That would make you happy. If suddenly you saw in the, in the newspaper that the place they worked, the, everybody was laid off and he's out of work now and you got a great job and you felt a little good about that. Or... And he's facing a very serious, he or she is facing a very serious operation. Mm hmm. But if, if you would like to see something bad happen to them, you have not forgiven them. Number three, if you would consider misfortune the judgment of God for what they did to you, you have not forgiven them. Did you know that so-and-so was in a bad accident? Uh-huh. God is dealing with them for what they did to me. <laughs> uh-huh. There is justice. God does. His eye is on the sparrow. God saw what they did to me. And just look what's happened to them. If you could feel that way, that when misfortune happens, it's God dealing with them for what they've done to you, they're not, they're not forgiven. Oh, I'm, I did it again. I'm striking out. <laughs> what time is it, Brother Dave? <laughs> That's a, all right, my 15 minutes, all right. All right, I'm going to quit here because this is going nowhere. I, I try. <laughs> I, I preached this to Brother Denafrios, and I didn't get an amen. I preached to Brother Jimenez. I preached it here and there. I guess I, I got a lot out of that. I just cleaned up my act. It, it helped me. It helped me, these little points here. They, they, ju they just did the, the world for me. But now, here, now the, the king represents God. That's God. That's in the parable, he's God. And this man that has defrauded him of $80 million comes before him. And, and he's a thief. He's an embezzler. He's taken all of this money that, that he collected that belonged to the king and he's used it. He's vacationed. He's, he's spent it on, on uh, uh, great parties and he's bought him different things. He bought him a boat.
boat. He bought him a Mercedes. He bought a Cadillac for his wife. She's got furs hanging in her closet. She's got clothes. She's got diamonds. She's got everything. He has lived sumptuously on what he has stolen away from his Lord. And he's cleverly balanced the books because this is taking quite a while for him to be found out. But finally the bookkeepers have discovered it. And they, when he, as he stands before the king, the, the king says, give an account. And he cannot, $80 million that he's embezzled. And the king said, you crook, you disobedient, you whatever. And the king said, now take him and sell him into slavery, his wife, all of his possessions, his children, put him on the slave market. I'm going to, not going to get my money back, but I'm going to have justice on this unrighteous man that has robbed me and defrauded me. Sell him into the slave market. And he fell on the floor. And he began to think, my wife, my precious wife, is going to be there, shackled, and stand up with a slave trader. And she's going to be sold on the market. And she's, what will happen to her, I don't know. And my children, the, what I have done, my wife will spend the rest of his life a slave in somebody's home. My children are going to be sold. What I have done to my children, what this, what this means, now my little boys are going to be slaves that are going to be in the fields and are going to be doing the menial task and any type of abuse is coming upon him and the tears come down his face and he lays before the king and he, and he sobs. He said, Master, forgive me. Have mercy. Have compassion. I have sinned. Have mercy. And the heart of the king is touched. And he says to the bookkeeper, he said to the man that's keeping the accounts, cancel his debt. He said, get up. I forgive you. It's all right. Everything is, is everything. I negate it all. I'm just going to uh, let it go. Get up. Go out. Live your wife. Take your children. Enjoy. Go on. I freely forgive you everything. And he stands up. A man condemned. A man that had everything to, to lose. His, his wife gone. His children gone. Everything gone. He's forgiven. He walks from this place of judgment and this place of mercy. And he goes out from the presence of the king. And there he runs into a fellow. Hey, you. Hey, just a minute there. Come here. He said, Where's my $17? Where is my $17? And he said he grabbed him by the throat. He took him by the throat. And he said, you are going to jail till you pay me my $17. And he had him hauled off. And then the servants went in and they said to the king, King, Guess what? What? That fella that you just forgave the $80 million had a man put in jail that owed him $17. And the king said, bring him in to me. Now, that is God. Do, do, are, you, are you getting that? Can you understand this? That is God. And God said to him, you are exacting $17 and putting that man in jail when you owed me $80 million 
that you stole from me that you could never pay back, that I forgive, that I let you go, that I counted, I canceled out your debt. You are exacting the you're exacting seventeen dollars and you put a man in jail. The king said became rough, angry. He said, Then you're going to jail. You're, I'm turning you over. I'm putting you in jail. And you'll die. And you'll rot there. Because, not because he stole the $80 million. But when he had received mercy from the king, he wouldn't show mercy to someone else. So, here it is. If you don't show mercy, you're not going to get any mercy. Now, I need mercy. I need mercy. I'm short on mercy. I, I need mercy. And I don't want to cut mercy off from me. I don't, I don't want to, I, I don't want to, to have the Lord say to me that my sins are just going to keep piling up and not be forgiven. And they're just going to keep piling up and not be forgiven unless I forgive those who I think have wronged me. Now, I will leave this between you and the Holy Spirit. I will leave this to your conscience. God didn't hear your praise this morning or accept your worship if you and your brother are walking out of harmony. I don't care what he did to you. Look what you did to God. You broke his laws. You transgressed against him. You were God's enemy. You were lost. You were rebellious. You were without hope. And God freely forgave you. And if you don't forgive, God said, then, now, I have forgiven you. And you're walking out clean. Sister Sue, play, Christ paid a debt he did not owe. And I owed a debt I could not pay. And I needed somebody. And I believe somebody needs to say this morning, I, I know I've been wronged. I've been nursing this thing. I, won't, I, I haven't let it go. It can go back to childhood. It can go back to whatever. It can be grandfather, grandmother. It can be an aunt or an uncle. It can be, it can be mom or dad. It can be a brother or sister. It can be an employee or an employer. It can be a cousin. It can be a friend. It can be a neighbor or whatever. It can be a brother in the, or sister in the church. But this morning, you've got something in your heart that you won't let go. A debt that you're still exacting. Something that you want. So you, you, they've hurt you. They've transgressed. They've done something against you. You're not going to let it go unless you have vengeance. Unless God deals with them. Unless something will happen to them. You want your pound of flesh. But if you're going to exact, if you're going to exact that, you're going to find yourself turned over to the jailer. I don't want to go to jail. I believe that God wants us this morning from our heart. I want from, from my heart, God wants me to forgive the wrong that has been, that I feel. And I'm not saying that there wasn't some. The Bible didn't say that the guy didn't owe him the $17. He borrowed it and didn't pay it back. That's true. Maybe somebody legitimately, they, they, they did you wrong. Something that should never have been done to you. you, you it, it's true. You, you didn't make it up. You've been trespassed. Somebody trespassed. Somebody hurt you. Somebody did something to you. But God said, but if you don't forgive them, if you don't forgive the $17, I'll hold you responsible for the $80 million. Let's stand together. 
Now I want, I, I, went, I went a couple minutes beyond. But as I sing this song, Christ paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I, I want us to make a little altar right where we are. Not going to come up for it this morning. Right where you are. The Holy Spirit is knocking on your on your door. Holy Spirit's knocking on your door. There's some of you that have debts that you want to collect that go back years and years and years. Years and years and years. And God wants you this morning to cancel that out and say it's all paid. And I'm going to forget about it. And I'm going to wish them the best. I couldn't rejoice if something, if some evil happened to them. I'm going to forget about it. I'm going to do it this morning. I'm going to let this Word of God work in my heart. And I'm forgiving that person because God has forgiven me.